Hello, and welcome to the Successful Breastfeeding Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to be telling you the history of successful breastfeeding and how we went from being a small, one-person, local, private practice to a whole team of lactation consultants that serve women across the entire country and Canada now, and even moms in Australia. What? Um, (laughs) Through our virtual breastfeeding support, and I'm going to tell you how I accidentally fell into this type of support and the journey that got us to where we are today. I love telling this story. It's super fun. But before I dive into the details of this story, I just wanted to say, if you really like this podcast and you want more information, please listen to some of the other episodes. We've got some really great stuff that we've covered on the podcast so far, and we have even more on our website. So head to successfulbreastfeeding.org and check out her blog, check out the resources. And if you need some support, sign up for a private session with me and my team or take one of our classes. We have a really great prenatal class that comes with a private session and a special class just for moms who are going back to work to help you set up your stash, work through all of the things you're going to need to know both for you, for your baby, and your childcare providers to set you up for success before you got go back to work. And of course, just like with everything that we offer. It also comes with private support from me and my team. So please go to the website, successfulbreastfeeding.org, check it out. And we've got some freebies you can grab while you're there too. Something for everybody, no matter what stage you're in. And if you want to support us and don't necessarily need support, consider membership and get access to our vault where you can find everything that you need from bump through weaning to help you along your successful breastfeeding journey, as well as being fully invited to our support community. Anyway, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about how we got here. So flashback to me starting my journey. I have got my first certification and I started teaching breastfeeding classes in the community. Um, I was teaching live breastfeeding classes and actually did until very recently. I don't do them anymore. Everything that I do is now online, which is just crazy and I love it. Um, But I used to teach just a tiny little breastfeeding class. My very first class that I taught, I had two couples come to that class, which was just the most exciting thing for me at the time because I was like, all right, I'm doing this. Look at, I'm a professional and I'm making money. I wasn't really making money. I think I made like $20 teaching that class, but still it was like, it was really an exciting time for me. I had just started out, um, And then shortly after I got my first private client and started seeing women in their homes and supporting them with breastfeeding in their homes. And then I got a job working in a breastfeeding clinic where I was able to gain more experience. And um, I, I noticed a lot working in that clinic and I realized how just not supportive a clinical environment is for women who are trying to breastfeed. I mean, asking a woman to leave their house when they're newly postpartum, uncomfortable, bleeding with a baby, especially like during flu season, like nobody wants to take their baby out, especially to a clinic during flu season amongst everybody and all the germs and everything that's going on. And um, even outside of flu season, just getting out of the house with a newborn can be really overwhelming. And then you have to go to somebody else's office and sit in their chair in their room and learn from them. And the way that I was trained by other lactation consultants was to be very hands-on and do things for these moms. And I learned real quick that that doesn't work. You do it for them and they leave feeling really helpless and un- they're not confident. They still don't know what they're doing. And they're like, okay, well, I can't, you can- I can't go home with you. Um, so um, after being in that clinical environment for a while and realizing that, you know, I didn't have enough time to be with these women. I wanted to give them more of my time because those 20, 30 minute sessions was just not enough. Um, And I left that clinic and started doing home visits. And what I realized doing these home visits with these women is one, I was able to be with them for two hours. And during that two hour period, I spent a lot of time just reassuring them and talking to them. And it was a lot, it was a lot of talking and a lot less 
of the actual physical support of breastfeeding. And um, what I was also able to figure out what was really effective during that time is I was very hands off with the level of support and care that I provided to these women. Because anytime I would even attempt to get the tiniest bit hands-on with these women, I noticed that it drastically lowered their confidence in what it is that they were doing. So towards the end of my first year of supporting women in um, doing um, home support, I stopped touching women. Like I did not, the most I ever did was I would take my hand, put it on the back of their hand and guide them so that they could be doing everything themselves. I didn't touch mom's breasts. I didn't touch mom's baby. I let them do it. I modeled what to do with my demo breast and my doll. I have an Ernie doll that I still have to this day that I stole from my son at the time when he was a baby. Um, and I still use that very same Ernie doll. Um, and I model what I would want to see mom do so that she's doing it herself. And she usually, you know, it takes a few tries to get it right, but we learn from making mistakes, right? So it takes her a few tries to get it right. She gets it right. And then I can say, look, you did this yourself. This was not me. I didn't do this for you. You did this. And then the light bulb goes off and they're like, oh my gosh, I did. And that confidence level just drastically increases. And then after that, they still might check in with me and like maybe send me a picture or something after I'd leave their home and be like, is this right? Am I doing this right? I might give them a couple pointers, but like, yeah, you guys are doing great. And I had such incredible success. It's mind blowing. Um, so fast forward a couple years later, I am doing home visits exclusively at this point. I, my success rate with my clients was just astronomical. I probably only had a couple of people over that period of a couple of years that things just weren't working. And one of them, it was just a like a biological issue, totally out of their control. And the other one was just, they just decided they didn't like breastfeeding. And other than those two people, everyone else met the goals that they had initially told me they wanted to meet for their session. So I was feeling really good. I was feeling really confident. And then oh, everything came to a halt. I found myself going through a divorce and I found myself a single mom with two kids and I was struggling. <laughs> I was struggling a lot. Um, I was struggling to find childcare because I really didn't have family around available to support me. Um, I was struggling financially. I just couldn't afford my house. I couldn't afford my car. I could barely afford to feed my kids. Um, I had opened a credit card just so I could buy groceries and I was working three jobs and it was crazy. I was supporting women still with breastfeeding, which was awesome. And obviously it was the work that I loved doing. I started a side hustle, um, organizing people's houses, cleaning, um, and doing other random errands and things that people didn't have time to do, which was nice because I was able to fit it in to my my schedule and the tiniest bits of time I could get away from my kids. Um, and I took on a job working for shift and I would take my kids over to a friend or somebody for like an hour or two. And I would go and like fill up a couple grocery carts full of groceries. I was even working at target for a little while, just doing anything and everything that I possibly could to make ends meet and try to fill in the gaps. Um, and the breastfeeding support was, starting to get um, really difficult because these women would call me and say, you know, I need help. I need support. And um, I really need help. Like right now, like things are really bad. And, you know, when mom and baby needs help, you need help right then. I mean, who wants to sit in excruciating pain for another week while you wait to get into a clinic? Nobody wants to do that. Women are going to give up long before they get to that point. Unless you are really determined to make breastfeeding work, nobody is going to sit with excruciating nipple pain for a week. They're going to start doing other things, trying other things, using nipple shields, starting to pump and bottle feed and all these other things that are going to make breastfeeding 
way worse than it is going to help because they're left to struggle on their own. And um, it has always been my philosophy since the beginning. Um, initially, it was I guaranteed that I would get in to see moms within 48 hours when I was doing home visits. And that was kind of realistic for home visits because when I'm doing a two hour consult, it really ends up being like three, four hours, depending on how far mom away, away mom is. So sometimes I could only fit one, maybe two consults in in a day. Um, so when I was a single mom and struggling with childcare and trying to get, um, make money wherever I could, people would call me for sessions and I'd be like, you know, you are going through a lot right now and you really need support. And I hate to say this to you, but I probably won't be able to see you for three, four, maybe five days, depending on when I can get somebody to watch my babies um, and trying to fit you into my other work schedule. Um, and so what I did the first time I found myself in that situation where I couldn't get to this mom, like I got off the phone and I was just in tears. I was in tears. I had broken down and was like, crying because of my own personal situation and crying because now this mom is having to wait. And I promised myself I would never make a mom and a baby wait. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden this light bulb goes off and I'm like, I wonder if they have an iPhone because I had an iPhone at the time. I was like, I can do FaceTime with them. Maybe we can FaceTime and then I can at the very least just try to help them and support them. Um, as best as I can over the phone just to try to get them through. So I ended up calling her back and was like, hey, or maybe I texted her. I don't remember. And I was like, hey, do you have FaceTime? And she was like, I do. I have an iPhone. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, let's try something. I said, I, I just, I feel really terrible that I can't get to you right away. And I really want to at least give this a shot this might not work. It might be nuts, but let's just give it a shot and see if I can provide you some sort of support and some sort of relief just to get you through until I can meet you in person and come to your house in the three, four, five days. I don't remember how long it was. And she was like, yeah, let's do it. So I put my kids down to bed and then I don't know what's going on with my hair here. Um, I put my kids down to bed and I called her and we did the FaceTime session. And she had kind of a complicated situation going on um, with her baby. Like they're just her, there was just some stuff going on. I will spare you the details. And I was able to see everything that I needed to see using FaceTime that I would have looked at if I was with her in person. And I was able to coach her to position and latch her baby exactly the way she needed to with the issues that she was having. Her baby was very um, like contorted and torticollis and had some funky, we needed to get really creative with her positioning with her baby because of that. And we were able to do it and it was effective. And we did it in 20 minutes, which blew me away. Because normally when I do a home visit, I need at least two hours. And I was like, okay. And like, I just, after I got off that like super short call, I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, what just happened? Um, and then I followed up with her the next day and the day after, and things were going so well. We ended up canceling that home visit, which I was like, on one hand, sweet. Like, we just did this. That was amazing. And on the other hand, I was like, oh crap, well now I don't get to go support you and I didn't get to make any money. Um, which, you know, wasn't the main thing there, but just kind of funny because of everything that I had going on. So um, I was really curious after that one incident, if that was just like a weird fluke, like why did that work so well? Um, can I repeat these results? And so I decided to do a little experiment and the next couple of people who called me and asked me for home visits, I actually said to them, before you schedule a home visit with me, would you be interested in getting a little bit experimental? And so I did it like two or three more times. And 
with the next few people that came in and I did it just for free, just because I was really just, is this going to work? Um, and it did, it worked for every single person that I had tried it with. And I was just like, Oh my God, like I am onto something. This is amazing. And I just like, I went crazy and I was like talking to my best friend and I was like, I can't believe this. Like, you know, I'm doing this. It's really radical. It's really new. Um, and it's working and these women are getting incredible results. And then I would just stay in contact with them afterwards, just answering questions like over the phone, sending text messages. They would, if they needed support or more troubleshooting, they could send me a quick video and I would look at it and be like, yeah, try this, try this. And it was working and it was effective. And it was saving me time because I went from having to go like four hours to manage one home visit to being able to do four consults in four hours. And so it freed up my time. It freed up my availability. And so I started offering virtual consults in addition to home visits. And, um, I was able to, I was still doing home visits because I loved them and I felt like they were still necessary at that point in time anyway. Um, and so, but I was doing more virtual consults than I was doing home visits. And I would get some weirdness from people at first. They were like, I don't know about this virtual thing. And I'd be like, you know what, let's just give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. And if you don't like it, we'll do a home visit afterwards. And they were like, all right. So we do the virtual consult and without fail, every single time that I would offer a virtual session and then told them if it doesn't work out, you know what, we'll just roll the cost of your virtual session into your home visit and do the home visit too. Without fail, not once did any of those women ever say, you know what, I think I need a home visit too. It was that effective and it was crazy and it revolutionized everything. And I went from struggling to find childcare to being able to fit all of these women into my day during times when my kids were napping or I could put them in front of a movie or I could put them to bed and do sessions at night. It was amazing. And it revolutionized everything for me as a single mom. And um, fast forward, I was then seeing women out of state. Um, my background before doing lactation support, I was actually in school as a sign language interpreter and uh, to be to become a sign language interpreter. And at one point, I was even able to cross both of those beams and I supported a deaf mother in California using sign language virtually, which totally like flipped me out and had me so excited. Um, and it was shortly after that point in time. Um, that I had hired Allison and she came on the team and I actually decided at that point, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to do home visits anymore. I'm going to hire somebody to do home visits for me. So I hired Allison and she came on and her original job was actually to be like the director of local support and to just do home visits. And lo and behold, <laughs> unbeknownst to her, she would very, very quickly move out of that role and we would do away with home visits entirely and only do virtual support. And it was within the last year that I actually stopped doing home visits. We don't do them anymore. We don't even teach our in-person class anymore. We just do online everything. Our back to work workshop is online. Our prenatal class is now entirely online. Um, it comes with a private session still because I think that ability to connect and answer questions live is really important. But even the class is online, which is fantastic because one of the struggles we were experiencing with the prenatal class was that, um, you know, we had it once a month on a Thursday night and people could either come or they couldn't. And now it's online and it's self-paced. So nobody has to show up anywhere. Nobody has to be anywhere for a specific point in time. These women who are taking our online prenatal class are literally doing it from their phones. I have had women take it while they were in the hospital, like people who um, were, um, you know, at risk for preterm delivery or like women who've had like preeclampsia or something and are in the hospital have 
um, taken our online prenatal class as well and got to do the private session with us from their phones. Like, <laughs> um, what can you, you really can't beat that. And then your partner can be with you, um, during the class and you can set it up at a time that works for you. And the other really amazing, beautiful thing that I just, I love that you literally can't find anywhere else is not only do you get to have a really effective lactation support session with us live, um, virtually. We also stay with our people for a couple of weeks in our tech support app that we use and are able to continue to provide support, advice, and feedback. And they can send us short videos of like what their baby's doing or pictures and like, hey, my baby's doing this weird thing. Can you help me troubleshoot it? Or, um, you know, I'm not sure what this means. Like if my baby hungry, are they full? Are they gassy? What's going on? We can help troubleshoot all of those cues. And because everything is virtual, we can be really available. Like women will text us on our tech support app and they're hearing back from us usually immediately. And if not immediately within an hour or two daily. Um, and because we can be so flexible, we're able to offer our support seven days a week and we guarantee same day appointments. If you are in need of support, you are going to get in to see us within 24 hours. Like that's just, it's going to happen. And it's usually that same day. Even if you contact us at 5 p.m. on a Saturday, we're going to say, sure, let's meet at 6.30 um, or 7 or 8 because we understand that when you need support, you need it now. And with virtual support, we have that flexibility. It's amazing. Um, and I love it. I never get sick of doing virtual sessions. Like I love walking in and to my home, in my office, sitting down with a mom, giving her my undivided attention and providing her with the support that she needs and coaching her and guiding her the exact same way that I would if I was with her at home and then getting really astonishing results. And then I get to spend the next few weeks being at their side, getting to know them throughout the rest of their um, the rest of their journey to help set them up for success. And then they join us in our community. So we're really with them throughout their entire journey. And it's a really beautiful thing. And, you know, we're reached the point now where, you know, some of the babies that we started seeing when we started virtual support are actually like, we're helping them lean now. Um, and it's just such an honor to have this business and have this practice and have gone through this journey and going from just this small potatoes, one person in home session, private practice to a private practice where I now have people who work for me. I have another lactation consultant and a pediatric nurse. I have uh, a couple of interns who are learning to become lactation consultants themselves um, in a VA that helps support clients and helps us process all the things on the back end. Like it's just crazy. And it doesn't matter where women live. We can support them wherever they are, no matter what state they live in, no matter what time zone they're in. And now even no matter what country they're in, which is incredible. Um, so I'm very grateful to all of you who have made this possible, who have allowed us to support you on your journey. Um, and I also am really grateful for those of you who even just sign up as members because I'm able to support you through our members vault and give you all access to all of that really awesome information and anticipatory guidance. And then you get access to our community and I'm able to support you in that way. And our community is unlike any other because it is literally the only community you're going to find online where you are guaranteed a safe space, a place where you're not going to get drama, and we're going to guarantee that every comment made on your question is evidence-based. You are going to get evidence-based responses that are actually appropriate for you. Um, so it's just, it's incredible and I love it. And um, I also want to add to, like, we often get people who are nervous about the virtual support. And um, if that's you, um, one day very soon, we're actually going to have evidence of like actual peer reviewed evidence of how effective this is. Our practice was selected to be, um, to participate 
as the practice for a study that's happening right now. And so researchers are actually looking at what it is that we are doing and they are studying it and trying to prove that not only is this effective, but it's worth implementing as like, this is the new standard of lactation care because what we are able to do is we're so available and it's just as effective as in-person support and we can take our availability and our resources and the platforms that we use and start offering it to people immediately after they have their babies so that hospitals that are understaffed and can't access women because this is a huge problem in hospitals. Hospitals are not able to provide lactation support effectively because they just don't have the staff and they can't afford to hire lactation consultants. But if we can offer virtual support and just give a new mom an iPad and do a support session with her in the hospital setting, I mean, how amazing would that be? It's mind blowing, right? Um, So that's my goal. That's what I'm going for. And we are literally doing this study right now. It's taken us two years (laughs) to get the study off the ground, but it's going, it's happening. Um, And we're going to prove that not only is what we're doing effective, but it's worth implementing as a new standard of care. So in conclusion, (laughs) um, I just, I have a lot of gratitude for what I do and I'm um, very blessed to be able to provide support at the level that I'm able to provide it and to see the results that my clients are getting and to continue to provide really authentic and genuine support that is evidence-based and effective um, and insurance reimbursable still, which is freaking phenomenal. So most of the women are reimbursed for what they pay for our services within seven days. Um, You can hear that chirping. That is my tech support app. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah um anyway thanks for listening to this episode i hope you've enjoyed it and if you stuck with me through the end thank you so much please go to successful successful breastfeeding.org right now grab one of our freebies like our pump like a boss um or pump more milk for your stash now we also have um some prenatal freebies on our website as well so head to the blog head to the freebies tab check it all out. Uh, if you have any questions or want to contact me, um, there's, you can email me through the website too. <laughs>